We want to look now at a technique of differentiating functions which will help us graph some of those uh, different functions we're going to face. Now, this is called implicit differentiation. Now, implicit differentiation is similar to all the other differentiation we have, but what we want to do is still um, derive, but the, we want to not have necessarily y, x as the subject. So, if we have a look at x squared plus y squared is equal to 4. So it's, it's not too bad a way to do this one. Um, normally what we would do is rearrange it and get y is equal to 4, equal, 4 equals 4 minus x squared to the power of a half and differentiate that and get dy dx. So the derivative of the function of y with respect to x would be equal to minus x over square root of 4 minus x squared. Okay, that's a little bit of work to actually get there. Not too much, like it's not beyond what the level of this course, but it, it's it's a little bit of work to do there. So is there a better way to do it? And there is called what we call implicit differentiation. So what we want to do is just differentiate every function with, when we're diff differentiating with this fun res respect to x. So when we differentiate x squared, we get 2x. But when we differentiate y squared, well, we're going to apply the chain rule. Technically, y is a function of x. So implicitly, we're differentiating, but we're differentiating like with respect to y. But that's where the y dx comes in, because we're saying, well, by the chain rule, we differentiate y squared and then multiply by the derivative of y with respect to x. So that's where the dy dx comes in. Differentiating a constant, well, that's going to become zero. So that's where the four becomes zero there. And then we rearrange to get dy dx by itself. So dy, 2y dy dx is equal to the minus 2x. So dy dx is minus 2x on 2y, which comes minus x on y. Now we said before that y could be written as square root of 4 minus x squared. So there's our differentiation as we had it before when we did it explicitly rather than implicitly. So that's where differentiation comes with implicit as implicit differentiation because we're going to use the chain rule apply it to the y variable treat it as a function of x so there's the process have a look through now as I said this function here we could go back and differentiate explicitly and that's not a problem but some functions you can't um, you just can't do it so something like xy equals sine y plus x squared y squared you can't get y in terms of x there it's it's impossible so the only way you're going to drive that is implicitly so we'd have to use this technique to to draw that one no we'll probably get ones that that are that hard but you hey you may get those ones later on in your career in mathematics so that's the process is quite valid uh, to be able to learn this now because, we'll learn, again, you learn it on something that's pretty easy and then you be able to apply it to something that gets harder as you go through. But that's that's where we, that's where it would actually come into play much, uh, well, it'd have to. We couldn't do it explicitly, you'd have to do it implicitly. So let's see how we can apply it on the process again. So by the power of four, so again, this one would be not impossible, but difficult to try and get uh, all in terms of y. So much easier to differentiate it with implicitly. So the four y, y to the power of four become four y cubed dy dx, and three y is three dy dx. Two four x cubed becomes twelve x squared. Five x five and the one uh, becomes zero because it's differentiating a constant. So what we need to do is then get dy dx, cancel, and collect them, and then you can collect all the other terms and have dy dx there. So if we see something like xy though, this is where it's a little bit tricky, you have to apply the product rule because you've got one function times another. So 3x squared would differentiate to 6x. Derivative of x times y, well, we derive the first function, which is 1 derivative of x is 1, times the second function, plus the first function times the derivative of the second. So derivative of y would be 1, then times the function derivative d1 dy dx, because we're applying the chain rule on the y, because we're differentiating with respect to x, uh, but we differentiate y, and then multiply it by dy dx, because 
times the derivative of the function y with respect to x for become zero. So that's how we would do when we have a term such as x, y. Apply the product rule. So looking at differentiating that function from before, so what will we get? So a function there, if we drive x, y, so again, using the product rule here, so technically the x becomes 1 times the y, we'll drive the first, leave the second, leave the first, derive the second, but we're driving y with respect to x, so it's 1 dy dx. Sine of y, again, applying the chain rule, could becomes cos y, because it's a derivative of sine y, times dy dx. And then, again, we're using the product rule on this part, so derivative of 2x, x squared becomes 2x y squared plus the x squared times 2y dy dx so there's our there's our uh, derivative fun and then we can collect any term so we've got all well, i haven't collected i just cleaned it up so y plus x dy dy dx cos y dy dx and then we could if we wanted to collect and get dy dx by itself well you collect those and then you can put them together and factorize the dy dx out and have a function there. So there's our process. Here's some more. 4x cubed becomes 12x squared. 2y cubed, 6y squared times dy dx because we're applying the product chain rule on it. And x becomes 1. And then to get dy dx by itself, here's the process. So we take all the terms across the right hand side. dy dx is okay by itself and then we divide by the minus 6y squared, so it'll change the signs on both those. So you can see how it's starting to work. Sine squared, 3y, x plus y plus 1. So again, applying the chain rule, because we bring the power down, subtract 1 from the power, times the derivative of what would be inside the bracket, so derivative of sine 3y, and 3 cos 3y dy dx. x drives to 1, y would be 1 dy dx, and 1 differentiates to 0. So we could have that there again, we can collect our terms with dy dx and really have that uh, in, in terms of y dx if we want, with x's and y's. So there's our process of, in the of differentiating with, in, with uh, functions that are not as pretty as we're used to, not all in terms of x. The process is called implicit differentiation and we'll see in the next video, we'll wait till the next video, to graph some functions and where we'll have to use, well we don't have to, but it's easier to use the process of implicit differentiation to graph our functions.